Hey students, welcome to the mandatory course of environmental science. Now as you people know this is a very very important course. Why it is important I will tell you, uh, we will discuss rather, right? But before that uh, let us uh, discuss something about this course. See there are certain uh, courses um, offered by AICT which is uh, which are actually mandatory courses and uh, if we are a human being, definitely we are I guess, right? then we should have detailed idea about these courses otherwise you cannot be a successful human being whatever position you are holding whatever uh, uh, money you are having uh, whatever bank balance you are having whoever is with you right without studying some particular topic like constitution of india right what are your rights what uh, what uh, uh, as a citizen you can do right what is environment why we should take care of the environment how you should work with the environment right how we uh, are going to protect our environment right these things are very very important and here in this particular uh, course there is environmental science mc 301 we will uh, see the details that how and what should be uh, should care, what type of care we should take about the environment now uh, question arises what things are present in this particular module or this particular course but before that let me ask you one question how many mothers you are having right that is my question you may take few seconds and think but i am telling you the answer right brother i am telling you the answer uh, have you thought of something right see the answer will be always n plus one why n plus one your mother right plus someone else who is that someone else we will discuss about right it may happen if you are married you have your mother and your right mother-in-law so two mothers then also it will be n plus one means two plus one okay now if if uh, say you um, belong to someone else you are in relation who treats you like your child right like uh, like he, uh, her child then she is also a mother to you right? many persons are there who are motherly to us okay so then it, it may be 3 plus 1 4 plus 1 5 plus 1 now who is that plus 1 right that's plus 1 is mother earth right why why uh, i am saying that because see we are existing here due to mother earth if mother earth is not there we will not be there no species will not be there nothing will be there okay so basically uh, see what what is important for us we need to protect our mother right it is, it is our uh, what i can say the prime responsibility or uh, supreme responsibility to protect our mother from everything everything from every type of destruction problem whatever that can happen to our mother we should protect her from that okay and mother's day is not only on 9th may it is on 5th june also because 5th june is nothing but world environment day and environment is our mother right so mother's day is not only 9th may it is 5th june also right so uh, in this particular lecture uh, or in this particular course rather first we'll discuss about the course then we'll go to the lecture okay so in this particular course what we people will be seeing there are basically five modules right this five modules includes the first module is general second module is uh, air pollution third module is water pollution fourth module is land pollution and fifth module is sound pollution but we'll treat it like that air and its pollution water and its pollution land and its pollution sound and its pollution right because why why this is important you cannot uh, study about air pollution without knowing the details about air what should be the healthy condition of air that if, if you are not knowing that you can never determine whether air is polluted or not okay so this is very very important for us and in the general part uh, there are basically uh, multiple lectures right in the general part there are six lectures followed by in air seven lectures water seven lectures land two lectures and noise two lectures right among that today this is the first lecture of the general so welcome to the first lecture of mc301 the your mandatory course on environmental science this course is also applicable uh, for mc401 and 501 right now in this particular lecture what we are going to see this lecture is basically about the resources right 
so basically we will see what resources are now can you tell me what is a resource my question is that are you a resource yes or no right are you a resource answer will be yes see it may happen that uh, people people say that tum kaun ho tumhari koi aukar nahi hai right you know nothing you mean nothing to anyone right it it may happen that people are saying like this but always remember you are a resource to your family you are a resource to your college you are a resource to india right and you are a resource to the world also okay whatever whatever any person is saying we are a resource and if you not believe me you have to believe me basically because we are nothing but human resource right hr department occurs everywhere present in our college also right it comes from human resource so definitely you and me both are resources right but what condition is what is a resource that we need to see okay i will not tell you right now it will be briefly discussed in the lecture that is present right after i am leaving the screen right it is present here now whenever resource is there there must be resistance right so what is resistance that also we will be seeing here okay how many types of resources are there what are renewable what are non renewable resource how the resources should be upgraded all these things we should we will discuss uh, in this particular uh, lecture right and resistance to resource also we will discuss in brief in this particular lecture right you it may happen that you are thinking what is resistance to resource very simple i'll give you just one example and you will understand completely suppose you are building a house right you are building a house so house is nothing but a uh, human made or man made resource right you are building it out okay now what happened one one uh, morning you went to that particular site and you have you are seeing that there are two flags of the local political party and the people are saying that uh, give us 50000 or 1 lakh otherwise we will stop your work right resistance this is resistance towards the growth of resource right your house will be the resource right now if people are demanding money from you it is resistance towards the growth of that particular resource so it is as simple as that right resistance is not only electrical resistance there are several types of resistances uh, present right aapko apna exam dene jana you are moving out for your exam suddenly what happened a black cat crosses the road people will say stay 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 otherwise your exam will be bad this is superstition cultural resistance right so different type of examples are there and it will be briefly discussed in this particular lecture so see it and always remember earth is our mother we have to protect her in each and every respect whatever the conditions be right so with this oath let us start the lecture so in this video we are going to see what resources are and how many types of resources are there and uh, what are resistance towards resources right so uh, basically if we go to the fact that what resources are or what do you mean by the term resource see there is a big dilemma about the definition we can say that resource is something which is very important for us right which is very important uh, to mankind and uh, we use resource almost every time right just like water we use water to maximum extent it is a resource we use uh, soil we use sunlight we use wind we use air all these are different types of resources apart from it we live in a house which is also a, a resource okay uh, we are using our phone laptop computer internet electricity everything each and everything is a resource in fact we are also resources right so uh there is a huge example now the question arises that suppose internet and mobile right internet is a resource mobile is also a resource but this two are very much different from each other internet cannot be materialized it ha can it uh, happen like that that uh, you are having 1 gb internet and i am just telling you okay give this 1 gb internet in my hand just keep it on the table just keep this 1 gb internet on the table can you do it answer is no right because internet is not materialized but it, it is definitely a resource and we use that resource only for doing multiple things multiple activities right but we can say that okay keep your mobile phone on this table that is possible but internet cannot be kept on a particular table right because internet cannot be materialized whereas the mobile can be materialized right so if we go 
to the definition. Basically, the main term is resource is something which may or may not be material, right? Resource is something which may or may not be material. Now, these resources may be of different types, okay? And it, it is basically something which helps people to live their life, to do uh, several activities, okay? So, that is what resource is and it, it may be natural resources like air, water, it may be human resource like population or it may be cultural resource like knowledge, right? Several other types of resources are there. Uh, so, basically, we will discuss about the fact resources and how many types of resources are there, right? So, if you ask someone that how many types of resources are there, so people will say multiple things, right? Somebody will say renewable resource, somebody will say non-renewable, some will say natural resource, some will say artificial resource, some may say cultural resource, some may say uh, human resource, right? So, uh, some will say conventional resource, some will say non-conventional resource. So, the fact is, how many types of resources basically are there? Now, if we go into this, if we go into this, then it, it cannot be done in that way, okay? So, there are certain divisions or certain specifications on the basis of which this classification of resources can be done, right? On the basis of certain classification, on the basis of certain specification rather, this classification of resources can be done, okay? So, depending on availability, right, if we say how many types of resources are there, the answer will be renewable and non-renewable, right? Renewable resources will be available, non-renewable resources may or may not be available, okay? Now, what these renewable resources are, what these non-renewable resources are, see, you have learned this from your very childhood. Renewable resources are those which are automatically renewed after a small amount of time. For example, say if you say sunlight, sunlight is a renewable resource. Why renewable resource? Because after every 12 hours, we get sunlight, right? That's why we say it is a renewable resource. Roughly, I'm saying this, okay? Similarly, uh, if, you, if you say forest, right? Forest also is a renewable resource. Water also is a renewable resource. Tides renewable resource, wind energy is a renewable resource. But here one question arises that we are saying that save water, save water, there is a big concern for water, right, save trees, save forest, but we are not saying save sunlight, save wind energy, save tidal energy. Now why is this? There must be a question that if renewable resource, sunlight is a renewable resource and if water is also a renewable resource, why we are saying save water and why we are not saying save sunlight, right? And here sunlight means sunlight, okay, solar light coming from the sun. Don't think that it is sunlight detergent powder, okay? So, uh, basically, renewable resources are further categorized into two parts. One is conventional renewable resource, another is non-conventional renewable resource, okay? Now, conventional renewable resources means the resources will be renewable. But they need our convention, they need our care because without proper care, if these resources are used, then there will be a huge problem. After a certain time, these resources will be completely used up. But after a large amount of time, it will be regenerated. For example, say, suppose you are cutting 10 trees and on the same day, you are planting 10 saplings, right? Now, just tell me, if you are cutting a tree which is 20 years old, 25 years old, and if you are planting a small sapling, right, it will again take 20 years or 15 years to grow, okay? So, it will grow, it is renewable, it is not like that it is non-renewable, it is renewable. But the question is that it, it will take large amount of time, okay? But once you lose sunlight, again you will get it after 12 hours. Once you miss, once you miss a tide, then you will get it after some ten, some certain amount of time. Okay, but that is not possible for forest. If once the uh, level of water is completely used up, we have to wait for centuries to uh, for its regeneration again. Right. So that's why we say that conventional renewable resources should be handled with care, and uh, they should be they should not be uh, used ex uh, excessively. They should be used. Uh, with a proper uh, procedure, right? Whereas non-conventional resources are those which do not need any concern, which uh, actually 
if you use again and again and again they will never be ended up for example solar energy is there wind energy atomic energy biogas is there okay right now moving a little bit more a little bit further we will see that what non renewable resources are renewable resources we have seen that renewable resources are those which will uh, renew after a certain amount of time okay and uh, this uh, are further divided into conventional and non conventional resources so conventional resources will uh, take large amount of time to renew themselves whereas non conventional resources which will uh, take small time to renew themselves right okay next uh, non renewable resources if we go uh, to that part these are something which cannot be renewed okay which cannot be renewed or else if it renews it, it it will take that amount of time which is not possible for us to get for example suppose coal and petroleum right whenever we say non renewable resource the first example comes of coal okay coal and petroleum now how coal and petroleum uh, has been formed if you uh, just look at the fact that how coal and petroleum have been formed you will see that excessive heat and pressure converts the plants and trees wood trunks into coal and converts the bones of living organisms into uh, petroleum right now this takes 1 million years so can we wait 1 million years and say that yes it is a renewable resource it will take only 1 million years to get renewed is not possible for us right so this type of resources are called non renewable resources basically uh, all fossil fuels and non renewable coal petroleum etc etc they cannot be regenerated they are inexhaustible they are exhaustible okay and um, they uh, once their deposits are just empty in the earth crust they will take that amount of time to get renewed which is not possible for us to be at right no uh, generation will live up to that time right so on the basis of uh, this uh, availability this particular uh, resources can be predicted right now on the basis of formation right on the basis of formation resources can be of two types okay one is natural resource another is man made resource right for example suppose there is a, a normal uh, river in, in your nearby right so that river is definitely formed by nature and is a natural resource and you are having an aquarium at your home right now that aquarium has been bought by you and it is maintained by you only right so that aquarium is nothing but it is tell me artificial resource or man made resource similarly uh, a, a, a zoo right not not zoo sorry a normal forest right where uh, wildlife sanctuary we can say where uh, the animals live with ease right that is natural whereas if we say a circus right or zoo then it is artificial caves are natural whereas housing complexes are artificial so on the basis of formation resources can be divided into natural and artificial right after that on the basis of the society resources may be divided into two types right one is cultural resource another is human resource now what is cultural resource see whatever we have learned from our family whatever we have learned from our teachers whatever we have learned from our parents right elders all this belongs to our culture right and this comprises the cultural resource for example whenever we uh, go towards some elder person right our grandmother grandfather mother father right we go we used to touch their feet right to take their to seek their blessings okay so this is nothing but culture right it is not written in any book we have been trained by our parents in such a way that okay when you jab bhi aap kisi bade jo insaan hai unke paas jao to unko unka pair chhu unse aashirwad le lo right so it is like that we 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 do it it is as for our culture right knowledge whatever education you are having whatever thing you know things you know uh, whatever knowledge you are having all this also belongs to cultural resource right and next comes human resource now this human resource is a big thing human resource is a branch actually right in every school college office ev everywhere human resource officials are there human resource executives are there but the thing is what is human resource what is the work of hr department what is the work of human resource department basically they work in that way that whenever uh, you need a uh, person persons right to work to do something then they are responsible to supply those persons they are, they are responsible to provide manpower okay 
and that can be only done by the help of the people who are present nearby okay so this actually belongs to human resource right so our india is having huge 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 human resource because we are having the mostly second mostly populated country in the world so we are having huge human resource right and we don't need to uh, away, um, don't need to be afraid about the lack of human resource right next if resources are if plus is there then minus should always be there okay if uh, a crust is there for the wave then a trough must be there similarly if resources are there there must be resistance to resources also now here the question arises what is resistance to resource right so if we go into the fact what is the definition of uh, resistance to towards the resources we will see that resistance see the, what what is the meaning of the word resistance is resistance means something which will provide hindrance to something now if if uh, we say electrical resistance whatever is used in uh, our regulators and and all and volume switches and all right if we see that thing then that particular thing is called electrical resistance because it provides hindrance towards the flow of electricity if electricity is flowing it will restrict the flow of electricity hence it is called electrical resistance right so anything uh, that uh, that provides a uh, hindrance to something is called resistance now this resistance to resources this this uh, basically means that something some activity which will not allow the resource to grow which will restrict the growth of resources then that particular activity will be called resistance towards resources okay now uh, this resistances can be of three types right number one will be natural resistance natural resistance means if uh, some hindrance some problem has been occurred by nature okay not by you not by me if it occurs by nature for example you are going towards college suddenly huge rainfall came and you cannot go that is nothing but natural resistance so you are going for doing some work and that work has been your your movement has been disrupted right that is called natural resistance similarly if you are going towards work and you can you see there is a hartal uh, or a band right then that is man made resistance okay nature is not nature is not making the hartal uh, and band and all but humans are making it right so that is also resistance but uh, we cannot uh, calculate uh, this uh, in this particular uh, topic right now here we will see about three different type of resistances first one is natural resistance and which will include earthquakes flood drought volcanic eruptions okay and these are basically natural disasters which actually hinders the growth of a resource right for example suppose you are building your home and suddenly earthquake came and your whatever construction you have made it just uh, destroyed it is destroyed okay so this is nothing but natural resistance okay now if we go for uh, cultural resistance which is the second part actually cultural resistance basically includes superstitions sorry superstitions right because uh, suppose again you are going towards college suddenly one black cat crosses the line and your parents are saying no 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 don't go don't go right apshagun ho gaya mat jao and all this right so this particular uh, things are nothing but uh, cultural uh, resistances right so basically different type of superstitious activities actually includes the cultural resistances okay next comes the third category which is nothing but human resistance now this human resistance is nothing but a uh, different option right just like war okay human resistance is also uh, maybe may also be of some different type that we will discuss here right so basically war is an example of human resistance because war uh, actually destroys uh, human resource it kills human beings that's why it is uh, take it as a example of human resistance but um, human resistance can be of different types also suppose you are uh, writing something and somebody has came and just teared up the page that uh, on which you have been writing that is also human resistance okay if if you are you are playing game on your mobile and your mobile is snatched by your mother or father right that is also human resistance towards the uh, playing of the game uh, there is a separate issue that playing a game is not a resource okay right so it cannot be considered here 
but suppose you are building a particular flat or something and the local political party came with a flag and they just incorporated the flag on your land and they said uh, that give us our share of 1 lakh, 2 lakhs, etc. Then only we will allow you to work. Otherwise, we will disrupt the work. We will not let the workers work here and your home, uh, your flat, apartment will not be built. Right? So, this type of political situation is very, very common in India. And uh, it, is, it is actually a bitter truth, but it is true. And whatever truth is, we have to admit by it. Right? So, basically, uh, this is also a type of human resistance. Right? So, these are the uh, resistances towards resources. So, so, we have seen uh, multiple things here in uh, this uh, particular lecture. First of all, I am summarizing the total lecture here that uh, we people have seen. Okay. So, we have start, this is basically the first lecture of this particular module and uh, we have start from resources. So, basically, uh, now this resources may or may not be material, right? Resources can be materialized, they may not be materialized. Examples we have already uh, discussed a uh, few minutes ago. After that, we people are having uh, this uh, types of resources. Now, resources may be of multiple types, enormous number of types may be there, but on the basis of certain criteria, this classification of resources will be done. All right? Classification of resources will be done on the basis of various criteria. Now, what these criteria are, if we go into the details to see what these criteria are, we will see that basically there are three criteria. One is depending on formation of resource, uh, it, it, uh, the resource will be divided. Another is depending on availability, the resource will be divided. And depending on society, the resource will be divided. Right? So, depending on availability, uh, the resource uh, may be renewable, non-renewable. Again, renewable resources are further divided into conventional and non-conventional. That too, depending on the need of convention, right? Non-renewable resource does not have any divisions, right? Non-renewable means non-renewable, okay? So, this was on the basis of uh, availability. Then on the basis of formation, we have seen that uh, the resources are of two types. One is natural, another is artificial. Right. So, natural resource and artificial resource, uh, this sort of things we have seen here that how uh, the natural resources have been built, how the artificial resources have been built along with examples. After that, uh, we have moved uh, towards uh, formation of resources, uh, sorry, um, classification of resources depending on uh, society, right? And, and on that basis, we have uh, cultural and human resource, right? So, what is cultural resource we have seen? What is human resource we have seen? How it operates? That also we have seen, right? After this, uh, we are, we are uh, looking forward towards the resistance to resources. Now, what resistance means, how it is different from formation of a resource and how it hinders the growth of a resource, that we have discussed briefly here, okay? And the different type of resistances, just like cultural resistance, natural resistance, human resistance, all three resistances have been briefly described. So, uh, you just uh, go through the lecture very carefully. And if you are having any problem regarding any of the topic, no need to worry, just note it down, okay. Just you may write a comment on the uh, YouTube post itself or you can uh, just jot it down in a piece of paper, you send it to me by mail or by uh, just WhatsApp or just call me up and we will discuss about it, okay. So, basically uh, this lecture was around uh, the resources and resistance to resources that we have completely seen. And uh, the later topics are present in the next lecture, right? So, we will go towards the next lecture. And the next lecture, basically, I am just giving you a glimpse of what is present in the next lecture. Next lecture is depending on something which we have discussed today. And that is nothing but human resources, okay? Human resource means population. Now, how this population is actually studied and what are the types of population, what is birth rate, what is death rate, what is mortality rate and uh, what are the types of population growth model available, how um, logistic growth model is studied, how exponential growth model is studied and what is the difference between these two models. That total things we will see in the next lecture that is lecture 2 of this particular module of the course environmental science MC. 301 or MC401 or 501, right? So, thank you so much and uh, this uh, lecture is uh, followed by certain questions. You just try to solve those questions and give answers. 
and if any problem is there then we will discuss just write in the comment box or whatever instructions i have given just follow it out and uh, we'll be getting everything okay so thank you and see you in the next lecture